How are we doing, everyone? Welcome back to another edition of FSI's PGA DFS Pick Show. I'm your host, TK Nation 47, joined with John Cool 19. John, how are you doing this evening? And uh, here we are again for the Arnold Palmer Invitational. I'm doing great. I uh, had a fun weekend watching golf. The uh, Watching Shane Lowry kind of collapse there. Well, first Daniel Berger collapsed last week on Sunday, <laughs> and then Shane Lowry. It wasn't really a collapse as much as a right. just that rain came and just wiped him out. He just could not make a, a, a good shot on the last couple holes once that rain kicked in. I, I kind of felt bad for Lowry there. He deserved to make a playoff have a chance against Sepp Straka, but uh, congrats to Sepp. That was really cool to see. Um, had enough juice in my cash lineup to uh, had six out of six. So that brought me to break even on the week with a terrible uh, GPP performance, uh, but I will take it, move on to the next week. And uh, yeah, excited for this week. Another tough, tough course. So it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, how was your uh, past week? Past week was okay. I would say at most, um, before I took in or locked in Keith Mitchell, I did have Shane Lowry as my early one and done pick. So I lost about 600, 700 K on that choice to go to Keith Mitchell, but, uh, thankful <laughs> Lowry did not win. Uh, sure. I was on the, I was rooting hard for Straka there at the end. So glad to see he won. So I didn't miss a winner. Uh, but, um, Hey, Keith Mitchell got me another top 10 and, uh, in one and done. And that streak is living on beautifully um yeah hoping that we can continue that success it's going to be an interesting one and done slide i don't want to get too far ahead of myself but it's going to be uh quite the conversation uh <laughs> going off of our picks for this week but uh first first up we have uh, as i mentioned the arnold palmer invitational uh big paycheck um it usually brings out a lot of a lot of good players in this uh in the you know for the field uh, so give us a little bit of a breakdown on who we can expect to play well here for um, at the Bay Hill. Sure. You alluded to it a little bit there. Uh, the field is pretty nice. I think this event, even more so than last week, is when golfers really start to set their schedule, getting ready for the Masters. Uh, we're just a handful of weeks out from that. I think uh, we have four events and then the Masters, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but really, golfers are kind of setting themselves up. Do they want to play two or three events, take a week off and then play the Masters? Do they want to play the two, three weeks right before? What do they want to do leading yeah. up to it? This is where they really start to get into that preparation mode. So I'm looking at guys uh, like Rory, who really, really want to uh, win the Masters. Uh, this is going to be, in, in my mind, an opportunity for him to get the ball rolling um, and get ready. But uh, the course here, we are playing at Bay Hill Club and Lodge. This is in Orlando, Florida. Back to a par 72 this week. 7,400 yard. It plays pretty long. So we're actually looking at uh, some driving distance this week. We do really more so than other weeks. We care about the off the tee game that includes driving distance. We want drive accuracy really, really critical this week. But at the same time, this is kind of a less than driver course. There's a lot of holes where guys are just going to take iron and make it to the fairway. The rough here is super penal. We're not looking quite as many hazards as last week, although there's there's still plenty of sand and water. It's not nearly as bad as last week, but the rough is just awful. You miss the fairways here and you can certainly um, be out of position on your second shot, third shot, and, and really struggle to even make par. If the wind kicks up, it can be even more treacherous than that. We've seen a winning score under five, five under par here at this event in just the past couple seasons. So it can get really, really tough. We would expect to see the cut something like negative, or I'm sorry, two over par, three over par. Um, and if the wind kicks up, it could be four over par or even worse than that for the cut. It is a smaller field, so that kind of contains the cut maybe just a little bit. Um, with the, that less than driver and the total distance on this course, we're looking at proximity from 200 plus. This is one event where that stat, that stat dominates on guys. Um, if you cannot hit it well from 200 plus with your irons, you are going to struggle here. You're going to need to play really, really well around the greens. Um, so we're kind of focused on ball strikers who are also really good at that 200 plus on the proximity. I'm also looking at that. These are very difficult to hit green. So I'm including really around the green, but just short game and short game on Bermuda grass greens. These are very difficult, very, very fast greens. Um, it's quite a bit different than what we were playing on the POA out in California. So in my modeling, I'm factoring in POA. I'm factoring in Bay Hill putting um, and kind of looking at that more critically than I do on many other weeks. 
Uh, par five scoring is absolutely essential this week. There are not many birdie opportunities on the par fours. The par threes, they're, most of them are 200 plus yards this week. Super, super tough par threes. The, gol the golfers who are going to rise up the leaderboard are gonna do it scoring on the par fives. So we're gonna include that in our modeling. Um, and then I'm looking at really difficult scoring uh, for comp courses. Uh, I don't really care specifically about other courses. There isn't very many who fit the, the same mold as this one, but I'm looking at other very difficult courses. That's kind of my comp. Um, and uh, so that's, I think about it uh, for uh, this main things, ball striking, proximity 200 plus and uh, Bermuda putting. Absolutely nailed it. I couldn't be, I couldn't agree more on all of that. Proximity from 200 yards was the very key stat that I looked at when I was choosing my golfers for the week. And um, yeah, I think we're on the right path here with the fast Bermuda greens. Um, definitely the biggest emphasis. I would agree with you there as well. Um, but yeah, a lot of guys that play well here continue to play well here over yep. the course of their career. Course history right. is much more important than comp courses this week. Absolutely agree. All right, moving on to our picks for the week. Uh, I'm going to start off with my favorite, and that will be Adam Scott, uh, kind of coming back to form. Um, 9K, not a bad price tag as well. 35 to 1. I've seen multiple, uh, you know, bets out there, betting cards. I've seen Scott on the top of those uh, with some excellent form here. He's coming in off of the fourth place finish at the Genesis where he had 5.9 strokes gain on the approach. He gained over seven with the putter, which is absolutely crazy to see with Adam Scott. He's got the broomstick going. Uh, he's got a lot of good history here as well. Um, you know, although he's only had a missed cut in the 41st in the last two times out, but he does have a 12th, a 35th and a third in his lifetime here at Bay Hill. Uh, so I really like Adam Scott, you know, sixth in the model, 10th in that proximity that we talked about from 200 yards um, and 13th from opportunities gained. He does really well around these greens and I'm hoping the fast conditions help him. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to playing Adam Scott. Um, after kind of missing the boat on him at the Genesis. So um, I'm hoping he can kind of continue that form. Uh, what are your thoughts on Adam and who is your favorite of the week? Uh, yeah, I do like Adam Scott this week. He is one of my least favorite dressers on tour. He is absolutely <laughs> atrocious when it comes to picking out his wardrobe. Um, you cannot say the same about Rory. He tends to always look really good on the course, and I think he is a great setup for this week. Yeah, uh, he's absolutely. super consistent for me. I'm looking. He's made his last 11 cuts on tour. That's excellent. His last six events includes a win that was at the CJ Cup and three other top 10 finishes. Uh, so the consistency is there. I know he is priced up. I don't love the 11K, but you're going to be just fine finding some value if you're wanting to play him in your GPP lineups. Um, I would be even okay with the uh, 10 to 1 bet if you're not uh, trying to bet uh, eight or nine guys. You can go Rory up top. It's just fine. Um, he he rates out excellent on difficult courses. Um, and then when we talked about putting, he ranks seventh on putting on this course, on the Bay Hill putting stats. Yeah. Um, so he might not be the best on Bermuda, might not be the best putter on tour, but he's really, really good on this course when it comes to putting. Uh, his course history here, just fantastic. He's made seven trips. The worst finish was 27th. He was the winner in 2018, and he was also been top five, I'm sorry, top 10 each of the last five years at this event. So no one's going to have better course history than Rory over the last five years or so. Um, mm -hmm. And then the stats back it up as well. His last 50 rounds, he's top 20 in approach, top 15 in off the tee. Uh, he ranks just okay in that 200 plus. He's 27th in that proximity, uh, but great on par fives. He's number one driving distance on in this uh, field in the last 50 rounds and he is a birdie maker he's fourth in this field uh, birdies are better so lot to like about rory this week absolutely i think he's going to garner a ton of ownership at the top sure. but i think it's going to be very warranted with the kind of form that he has and the uh, course history as you mentioned uh rory was in my short list for one and done uh certainly a guy on my radar for DraftKings as well um you know hey when rory's at the best of his game you know rory's considerably one of the best in the world behind Rom or just ahead of Rom when he's playing lights out Rory golf. And yep. uh, we're kind of getting flashes, maybe not the whole entire game, but at least with parts of his game, we're getting good flashes. And if he puts yeah, it all together, one, 
If he points it all together in one week, you know for sure he's going to he's gonna turn that one week into a win. And I think it's a very solid favorite play on DraftKings. All right, moving into the value portion here. Uh, I'm going to talk about two guys here. Christian Bezadenhoek at 7,700, 50 to 1. I think the short, I think that number's short for Bezadenhoek on the outright market. And I think he makes for the fantastic pivot to DraftKings. Uh, you know, if you're not going to miss much with the 50 to 1, if he wins, I mean, I'm sure that's a great payday. Uh, but there are some better golfers uh, probably ahead of him that you would probably have a better idea of betting uh, when it comes to numbers. But 7,700 on DraftKings, pretty great. He's got some good course history in his short term uh, here at the Bay Hill Invita- or at the Arnold Palmer Invitational, seventh in two thousand one and eighteenth in twenty twenty. Uh, he's an elite short game player, uh, third in, in the field in short in strokes gained short game. Uh, that is putting and around the green combined, uh, fifth in putting, twenty third par threes from two hundred to two twenty five. Um, you know, as you mentioned in the breakdown of the course, you have to score on par fives. He's 21st in par fives. So it looks like he does pretty well at this course on those par fives and those long par threes. Uh, that is the difference for me in Bezayden Hout. I'm sure he's going to be quite popular. Uh, people are no, you know, people are pretty on to his course history. So yep. maybe we can take a small, a, a, a little bit of a pivot here to a guy like Cameron Young. A uh, new guy on course uh, or on tour. Um, he kind of, he pops for us at the Genesis. He was a runner up, well, a T3, but essentially was runner up to Neiman most of the week. And them two were battling it out for the entire weekend. And that's where we got really introduced to Cameron Young and his skill sets. Really great off the tee. He's a very long off the tee golfer. Really good with the putter too in the short game. Uh, he's not the most dialed in golfer with his irons, but he's pretty good with the short game, and I think that suits pretty well. Uh, we were talking before the uh, the the video here, and I, I said he's kind of like Bryson Shambo light. You know, he's like a he's like a you know uh, half version of Bryson. He maybe not as long as Bryson off the tee, but the skill sets are pretty similar. Uh, just gonna bomb it out there as far as I can. And I'm going to use the elite short game, you know, although Bryson doesn't have that elite short game like Cameron Young, Bryson's just really good sure. uh, with that 150 club, um, which you know, kind of counterintuitive to his 400 yard drives that we were seeing mm-hmm. last year at this course. But uh, yeah, I really like Cameron Young and um, you know, the recent form is elite. And I think, um, you know, 16 at the Honda second at Genesis 26th at waste management, Phoenix open 20th at a, comp course like farmers for distance wise and shot select and shot shot proximity i think it sets up really well i really like it for gbps um what are your thoughts on these two and your and your favorite values of the week yeah they both popped for me i played a lot of christian last week um and uh if he hadn't got caught up in the bear trap uh, i think on two of the four days he should have found himself in the top 10 but still finished well um so i definitely like both these guys and just basically everything we said about uh, christian last week applies again this week it is a similar course setup um very very difficult to score birdies and uh he tends to rise to the top in those events so i'm liking both of these guys for me, I went with a, a guy you were on last week in this slide, and that is Keith Mitchell. He's 8,100 on DraftKings. I love the 45 to 1 number on an outright yeah. bet. I'm guessing you can find if you shop around just a little bit better, maybe about 50, but 45 is still a very good number here for Killer Keith. His last six events, he ha- does have one missed cut, but the other five events, all top 12 finishes. So he is in yeah. great form right now. The course history is also really good. Sixth place in 2019, fifth place in 2020. 43rd in 2021. Uh, I like the fact that he's played here and played here really well a few times. Um, and then I'm looking at his his stats are fantastic. He's 14th in that proximity stat we've been talking about. He's number two off the tee in this field, 10th team uh, in tee to green. He is third on par five scoring, which is, like I said, really essential to be able to move up the leaderboard this week. And 14th in distance. A lot to like about Keith Mitchell this week. Again, everything you said last week, um it's true again this week and one one cool thing watching him when he finished his round last week he had a great week i think he finished what t10 something like that but afterwards t9 he was standing out in the pouring rain rooting on his uh, georgia bulldog buddy sep straka on that final hole he was just screaming for that eagle putt to go in that didn't the birdie putt still went in but that was really cool to see he's just a good guy like to root for keith mitchell um another guy that popped in my model here is lanto griffin 
We've played him on spots this the past uh, couple months, but really he's he's in awesome form. He's made his last eight yeah. cuts. He's gaining strokes in all five categories. That's off the tee. That is approach around the greens and putting. There's very few guys in this uh, field that are gaining in every single category. Maverick McNeely is actually another one that's been doing that of, of recent form. Um, but I love Lanto Griffin. The all around game is excellent. He is at, he's been top 40 in every single event that he's played in this year. That includes third at the Amex, 16th at Pebble Beach. Um, the course history is good too. He was 36th in 2020, 21st last year. And uh, really the Bermuda grass putting is his favorite. He is ninth in this field on fast Bermuda greens. Uh, he's really good at a bogey avoidance, top 10 there in this field. And then uh, that 200 plus stat, he is 50th. Uh, but again, that's above average in this field. So for a guy at yeah, 7,100, um, I don't expect him to be top 10 in almost any stats, but he finds himself top 10 T to green as well as bogey avoidance in this field. So a lot to like there uh, for a guy. If you're top 10 T to green and then also top 10 Bermuda putting, you got a really good chance to be able to win some events if your putts drop. Absolutely. I think Lonto is pretty strong play. I think this bottom 7K range is really going to be the difference between ownership this week. There's a lot of guys, um, a lot of different guys. I could see people trying to play in this price range, uh, mm -hmm. which kind of transitions perfectly into the sleeper slide because uh, my guy is 7K this week, and that's Sahith Mitchell or Sahith Tagala. <laughs> sorry, Sahith Tagala. Um, 7K, 150 to 1. Maybe they play, maybe their uh, games are quite similar. I don't know, but see. <laughs> The Heath is uh, coming off of, you know, what we saw from the waste management uh, Phoenix open where, um, you know, he was basically in the lead for most of the time he finished third, I believe. And then he followed it up with a grind, you know, a grinded out 48th place finish at uh, the Genesis. He's has that elite short game. He's really good from 200 yards, uh, sixth in the field from 200 plus um, in the, as you know, uh, really good from par five scoring 16th in that short game that we all love from Tagala 19th in strokes game, short game and 27th putting. Uh, so I really like him and uh, 25th at the farmers, a little bit of a comp course correlation too. But yeah, like I said, that 7k range is going to be a lot of, a lot of guys and uh, your guy here for the sleeper slide, uh, not too far off from that price range. Nope, a little bit, little bit cheaper. Um, there's a handful of guys I, I clicked kind of right off the bat in the 6K range. Guy I think I like the most is Adam Svensson. Uh, he had a really good week last week, uh, finished ninth place. That is his second top 10 already this season, or I should say in 2020. Sorry, 2022, which is the current year. Um, but this is his <laughs> first trip to Bay Hill. Uh, so really no course history to talk about. Bermuda is his best putting surface, so I like that. Uh, but for him, the, he sticks out in approach game. He's a 10th on approach in this field, last 50 rounds, 17th in that proximity stat we've been talking about all night long. Uh, he rates out well off the tee, 14th greens and regulation. And he's also a birdie maker in the top a third of this field in that stat. So I do like quite a bit of Spenson to round out your DraftKings lineups. I don't know if I would have the, the cojones to bet him at the 250 to one, but a top 40 bet would be excellent here for Svensson. Um, and really for uh, Saith as well. I think both of these guys yeah, have a good right. chance to make the cut and then uh, have a good performance over the weekend to uh, make a name for themselves. Yeah, we saw uh, Svensson, you know, up for the PGA Tour, I believe, in like 2019 or 2020. Yeah, he went spent up. Spent that year. Yeah, up. yeah. Spent that Corn Ferry Tour last year really getting his game together. I mean, yeah. He's had a lot of consistent finishes. I really like the Svensson call as well. Going to keep – we've been playing him for a couple weeks now. Let's just keep, you know, grinding it out with Svensson and, and maybe the top ten uh boom is is there right and it just grounds out yep. the lineup perfectly so i like both calls this week for the sleeper slide all right moving on to the one and done slide um hosted by our guys at the fantasy national golf club uh they have a lot of, i just wanted to make a quick little thing here they have a lot of uh major one and done uh contests up i know we're gonna do one uh, we're gonna be a part of one uh where we're gonna try to get all the subscribers and ourselves into the same contest so we can uh, kind of, you know, play against each other through the website, Fantasy National Golf Club uh, Championships. So um, that, that's going to be fun. And I can't wait to do that. Uh, but, John, we got to start with you here, man. We got to get you going. <laughs> we, we, we need to get a win here from you. 
Yeah. So last week I was on Sung JM and uh, yeah. he decided to go out and, uh, and miss a cut. Uh, so that wasn't good. He he four putted on 18 yeah. in order that to go it. from a, a birdie putt to a double bogey, I believe it was. Yep. Just absolutely terrible way for me to finish uh, my Friday as far as Sung Jay went. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to make a rebound here. I am quickly sliding down the leaderboard, not up the leaderboard in one and done. Uh, but I'm going to go Keith Mitchell this week. I like him a ton. Yeah. I hope he's not as chalky. I have, for whatever reason, I've been picking without uh, really thinking about ownership. And then when the ownership posts, I have the first or second highest owned guy every single week. And I don't think that'll be the case with Keith, Keith Mitchell. We'll see. He'll, yeah. he'll probably be owned but not number one or two. And I'll be happy with that. Just kind of getting off the, uh, the, the burning chalk that I've been on here the last handful of weeks. So, uh, and then you were taking Sanjay this week and you took Killer Keith <laughs> last week. Yeah. We have, we have completely swapped our picks from last week. We're taking, we're taking, basically we're just taking the Florida guys, right? Sanjay yep. Florida winner at the Honda before Keith Mitchell also winner at the Honda before. So we're just taking Florida guys and I love it. Um, Hopefully I can get the bounce back week from Sunjay. He doesn't miss many cuts in a row. That's what I've no. noticed. You know, when I was scouting out my pick, I was looking at Rory and uh, I was looking at Will Zalatoris. I feel like I'm always looking at Will whenever he's in the field too. Every so week I'm I want to pick Will. <laughs> I'm going to be taking, I'm going to be taking Willie Z soon. Uh, but um, yeah, I have a feeling Rory is going to be the chalk. And that's kind of why I went with Sunjay because we've seen this all year, like the chalk guys and one and done's have stunk so i've been trying to stay away from the one and done uh chalk and uh, i think everybody taking sunjay last week really opened up that league availability for me to take them this week and in a strong bounce back and i'll have a lot of um good sunjay money against the field so that's kind of my theory this week but i think uh keith mitchell a fantastic pick i i mean I, I can't so. say it. I can't <laughs> say it enough. I'm going to have quite a bit of them on DraftKings as well. I think yeah. Adam Scott. I think Adam Scott makes for a solid one and done too. You know, there's not yeah. going to be many opportunities to take Scott. And uh, if if you're listening in and you're looking for other opportunities, if you've already taken someone like Mitchell or M, we'll look at someone like maybe Scott. Um, I, I I certainly don't think it's a bad idea to go with Rory, but I sure. can also see other opportunities uh, to take him later on in the year too. But I was thinking maybe even Casey or, uh, yeah. or Fitzpatrick is a couple options as well. Um, I'm wondering you know, what ownership for Pat Fitzpatrick's going to have. That's yeah, cool. Yeah. That's a great question. I don't know. Um, hopefully more so than Keith. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so for you as well. I think uh, Fitzy he he rated out pretty well on that uh, Bermuda putting, especially yeah. from Bay Hill perspective. So uh, I could definitely see it. I know he's a very uh, he's an interesting DraftKings play. At 9,200, that's the most expensive I've seen fits in an American PGA Tour event. So uh, going to be quite impressive, uh, either ownership or I don't know. Like if it goes south, I could see a lot of people being upset with, with, the, with the Fitzpatrick play yeah. this week. So we'll see. Um, but that'll probably wrap things up for us here at FSI for this week's Arnold Palmer Invitational. Anything else to add, John, before we go? Nope. Uh, super excited for this week uh, and hopefully a little better on one duns and uh, yeah. time for us to, to, to bink a GPP here. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it's we're, we're due, man. We we've been, you know, meddling in the DraftKings department. We've been killing it. And, well, I've been killing it one and done. You've had a couple of spike weeks. We gotta, we gotta get a, a week all together where everything all, all cylinders are firing. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh, the Almer Palmer, Palmer Invitational is always a fun event. Uh, maybe doesn't have the star power with Bryson out here. I was looking forward to seeing him drive that green. Uh, yeah. But, hey, maybe next year. All right, guys. Thank you for listening. Like this video. Comment below with any questions you may have. You can follow us on Twitter at TKNation47. That is John Cool 19 And, uh, yeah, thank you very much. And enjoy your night. Sweet. Good luck.